when moving from civilian practice to this kind of practice, the clinical skills are very much the same, to be honest. It's just the environment that you're attempting to apply them is very different. The leap, really, is not in changing your clinical practice as learning extra military skills and learning about the environment you're working in. There's not many things which we do on board from that which, um, which we wouldn't do in, in a hospital. So the clinical skills themselves are often transferable. The real challenge is, is working within uh, the different environment that the, the military presents you. But then again, that's one of the most rewarding parts of the job for us, working outside uh, the area in which we're, we're used to. Um, as an anaesthetist, I'm used to turning up to work every day in the NHS, uh, having everything ready for me. My assistant gives me everything I need. I only have to look to my left and, and there's the piece of kit in my hand that, that I need. Here we're working on a, a helicopter that's often tactically flying um, with uh, a team who are also trying to work on the same constraints and, and, and that's the challenge and the, the interest for us as well is, uh, is taking our own clinical skills and trying to apply them in a uh, hostile environment. The British Military Hospital in Camp Bastion is a unique level one trauma centre that will bring you face to face with levels of trauma and patient care demands that you will not experience elsewhere in the UK. Hey there brother, welcome to Bastion. I'm Dr. Richie, what's your name? Move your hands, move your feet. All right, good deal. Medical treatment in the Bastion Hospital is all about teamwork. Ready, steady. What did he have? 100 offence nil? Uh, uh, I think in 50 offence. 50 offence. 100 of propofol. 70. Okay. Here you'll find that resuscitation is more often than not an activity carried out in harmony with the surgical team and the emergency medicine department. 20. So he's having 20 of vecuronium as well. Just before he goes round. So we're going to give him some tranexamic acid now, so we'll see how much that changes. This is uh, what we call our Rotem machine, um, and it's uh, a device which we've got which basically allows us to manage blood clotting problems. So this is from uh, our patient who came in today who'd been um, shot in the head, and uh, we used this machine to test how well his blood was clotting as soon as he came in through the emergency department. Um, and this trace which we can see here um, gives us a graph of how strong his clot is versus time. It's not the first time we've been caught out by this and underestimated something where the patient's been wide awake and seen pretty well uh, and we've done an x-ray and we've found a bullet where we haven't expected one. Um, so it just shows the value of being able to get the CT early. His blood did initially start to clot reasonably well but that after about 20 minutes or so, any blood clots were starting to dissolve again, which is abnormal. So that tells us, uh, and it tells the surgeons, that trying to operate on him right now would be dangerous because any blood clots which form are gonna just break down again straight away. So by looking at this, we know exactly what drugs and what blood products to give him to try to solve this problem. In Afghanistan, post-operative pain management is a rapidly developing field and key to the safe evacuation of patients back to the UK. There's guys out there on the ground who every day are putting their lives at risk and I personally believe they deserve the best medical care that is available. It does provide a huge deal of uh, reassurance for them knowing that um, genuinely expert help is at hand. They always express it to us the sensation that um, if they can just uh, keep their friends uh, going until the murder arrives then, then they have a strong belief that they're going to be all right.